So now we can see we get the results here. We get all these different kind of bounding boxes as we saw in the slides as well. We're detecting the, the person here. 52% confidence score that this is actually like a person. This is actually like a really nice prediction. Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about mask, mask RCNN for image segmentation. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the model, the architecture of the mask RCNN. Then we're going to see how we can actually like implement this here in code. And then we'll jump in, see an example of how we can actually like take an image, pass it through the mask RCNN model, and then we can get an output with the image segmentation, all the classes, region of interest, and so on. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel for a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more ability quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can also help you out with your own uh, projects. If you have some problems, I can give some guidance and so on. So if you're a member of the channel, you can join my disc private Discord server. You can get my private email and then you can get some guidance and help with your own problems in your own projects. So thank you guys. So first of all, here we're going to talk about the mask RCNN model or the architecture. So basically here we just have like some kind of optic detection. So we're going to do optic detection on all the individual pixels that we have in our image that we pass through our model. And then when we actually like have our optic detection, we also want to find instances or like the segmentation. So we want to segmentate all the individual pixels inside of that boundary box. So instead of only finding a boundary box around some object that we want to find, now we can also draw like a mask on top of those things uh, inside of the boundary box. So let's say we want to detect a person as in this image here. Then we actually want to find all the pixels inside of this boundary box here um, that is actually like a person. So we want to create this mask here together with our detection. So this is what mask RCNN is about. We have these different kind of like convolutional layers. So basically we have like this model here or like this image here that we pass in with our boundary boxes as well. Then we're doing round of uh, like uh, region of interest alignment. So we're aligning all the re regions that we actually like want in our image or like in the boundary boxes for all the classes that we want. Then we basically just pass those through like different like different or like a number of convolution layers and then at the end we get out this mask here as we can see in the output image here to the right we also get a class box or like a class label for all the different kind of uh, boxes or all this all the segments that we actually like segmentated out in our image so we get all these different kind of information uh, in our image, we get a number of different a number of different kind of classes. We get all the masks, we get the boundary boxes, we get the uh, regions of interest, and we also get the class names. So we're going to see this here at the end of the video how we can actually implement this, take an image, pass through the model, and then get the results out in the end. So the last thing here that I'm going to show you is just basically the results that we're going to get. After that, we will actually jump into the code, see how we can implement it in Google Colab. I'm just going to give you a script that you can run by yourself. Everything will be on my GitHub. It will also be down in the description. So you can just go into my GitHub, take the code. You can just take a, a random or like a, a, an arbitrary URL of your own image or like some images from Google or somewhere else. And then you can basically just paste in that uh, URL to the image and then you can do image segmentation on that image that you pass into it. We can play around with some different kind of parameters like number of uh, bounding boxes that we want to draw and also then the classes that we actually like want to detect in our image but also our region of interest and how confident should we actually like be before we are saying like this is a good detection and we want to create a mask of that detection in our image so this is the result that we're going to get we can see here an image of like some kind of like road where there's a lot of pedestrians walking down the, walking down the, the, the sidewalk here we also have some houses cars and so on so we can see that we're both detecting like uh, person like people in the image here. We're also detecting the cars. We're drawing the boundary boxes around them We also draw the, the confidence score and we also draw the class label So we show all the information here that we act like get out from our mask RCNN model and we can also see all the mask here Which is actually like pretty good of these like people walking around on the street and also the cars So we can see we get this really nice mask of our optics so let's just jump straight into the code here. We have open up a Google Colab here where we're going to use the TPU. So we're going to use the free cloud TPU that they have. So we can actually do even faster inference and so on. I'm also going to create other videos where we're going to, imp going to implement this here on the TPU and also a, a, a TPU on our own computer, on our own local computer and so on. So again, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell notification so you know when I upload and get on notification when I upload new videos about mask RCNN and other different kind of models within deep learning or some other different kind of computer vision projects. So in this video here, we're going to do mask CNN image segmentation demo uh, with the free cloud TPU provided here by Google Colab. 
So first of all here, if you want to use the TPU, we can go up to the runtime here and then we can change the runtime type. And then we can choose a hardware accelerator that we want to use inside of Google Colab here. So we have some different kind of features or like some different kind of options here. So we have none where we're only going to use the CPU. We can also choose the TPU or the TPU in this example here. Um, but here we can see that to get most out of Colab, avoid using a TPU unless you need it. Uh, we can also do like TPU or something else like that. But this would here, we're just going to go with the TPU. We'll get the best performance. Also, if you're training your neural networks again, if you want to know more about how we can use TPUs here in Google Colab and use Google's TPUs, I also have videos about that in the deep learning tutorial. Uh, so definitely go check that out. But here we're just going to choose the hardware accelerator as the TPU. Then we go in here and basically just download the source code. So we go inside and download the mask RCNN uh, source code from GitHub. So basically first here, we need to clone uh, TensorFlow TPU uh, here from, uh, from GitHub because we want to use TensorFlow uh, together with our Google Colab and TPU. Uh, so we need to use TensorFlow when we're using the TPU here in uh, Google Colab. So first of all, we're just going to clone this directory here. We can see here that we can assign a backend. We're just going to connect to our backend and then we can then get clone here. After that, we're going to import the different kind of libraries that we need to be able to actually like run this script here together with mask RCNN. We can see that now we're cloning our repository. So now we have cloned it. We can see we get this output here. Uh, we don't, don't really need to go into details about that, but here we're importing the libraries. We, we're going to use IPython for displaying. We're also going to use pill to actually like import our images and work with images. We also need to import TensorFlow here. So here we're specifying TensorFlow version one, because when we're using mask RCNN, uh, that is based on TensorFlow version one. Then we're going to import TensorFlow STF. We're going to import sys, and then we're going to set up our path here for our TPU models. So we're going to use the official models here from the TPU directory or like the repository that we could have just cloned in the block up above. And basically we're just going in taking this model here, mask RCNN. Uh, we're going to set the path for that. We can also import the Kogo, uh, Kogo matrix here. So we're actually going to use the classes and, and those things from the Coco data set, which is also what mask RCNN here is trained on. We're also going to use from mask RCNN .optic detection. We have something called visualization utilities. So we can basically all we're displaying on our image is actually like visualized by this visualization utils function implemented here in the optic detection uh, from mask RCNN that we just cloned um, as well. So here we're just going to import the libraries. We're just running this blog of code. We can see that we have to select the TensorFlow version one. And now we're going to import all these different kind of libraries and modules that we need to run the code later on. So now we're going to load the Coco index mapping. So here we can see that Co Colab here uses a pre-trained checkpoint of the mask RCNN, which is the repository that we just um, cloned with the TPU from Google Colab from, from GitHub. And this model here is trained again on the Coco data set, as I just said. And here's a mapping between indices, like indices uh, that the model predicts and the categories in the text. So basically here we just have like the Kogo classes that we want to detect in our image. So we're basically just setting it up here. So we have a person, bicycle, car, motorcycle, airplane, bus, train, and so on. So we just have all these different kind of classes here that we're able to detect in our image. And these are just the classes from the Kogo uh, data set. So we can see we have 90 classes here. Um, down here, we're just going to set our category index. So this is basically just creating this mapping that we just talked about um, in the start. So now we can just run the blog code here. We're going to set up the different kind of classes that we're able to detect in our image. Then we go down, load an image. Again, if you want to do detections on your own image, you can basically just pass the, uh, paste in an, another URL here to your own image. So this is just an example here from Wikipedia um, of the example that I showed you in the slides before we jumped into the code. So we're going to we get we get here the, um, th this um, this URL here and then we're going to store it in our test.jpg and then down here um, we can set our image path here which is just equal to test.jpg uh, so we're going to have our jpeg then we can open up our image path here so basically here we're just going to create an numpy um, image string and then we're just going to read in our um, image here from our image path that we specified up here at the top. So we're just going to use image here from pill. We're just going to open up our image path. Then we get the width and the height of our image here as well by just calling image.size. Then we create our numpy image here um, that we initialized up here at the start. So basically here we can just say np.array and then we can just get the data from our image that we loaded in with pill. And then we can just resave it to the image height and the width. And then we also used free channels because we have our GMB channels. And then we're just setting it as 
uh, uh, unsigned 8-bit integers. So we have values between 0 and 255 um, in our image. Then we can just use the display here. So basically here we just display the image before we actually like passing it through our model. So now when I run, run this blob of code, we will get the image here from Wikipedia. We will open up the image and then we're going to convert it to a NumPy image. And then at the bottom, we're going to display it. So here we can just see we're downloading it first of all, um, and here we're converting it. So we're first saving it to test.jpg, we're loading it in, and then here uh, we're actually like displaying the whole image as we can see. And also this is the same example as I showed you in the slides. So this is the image that we're going to pass through the model here. We can see the image dimensions up here at the top, which we also specify. So here we just set the width to one, uh, 1024. Now we can create a TensorFlow session. So basically here we're going to set up the GPU or like the TPU. So this is just how we can set up like a TPU here for running inference of our models. So here we can just either connect to a TPU or normal CPU backend. So this is not setting up for GPU. Again, we're not going into details with these lines of code. I have videos about that here on the channel, how we can use the Google's TPUs and how to set them up. Over here we can tick on and off if you want to use the TPU or not um, in this Google Colab um, script here. So basically here, this is just to set up the, the Google Colab TPU address. Again, I have videos about that if you want to know details about what these lines here of code does, but basically just sets up the like address here for the GPU. It's initializing TensorFlow or creating this TensorFlow session on the TPU. So now we can basically just run this blob of code and you will then use the TPU for inference with our model. So here when we run it, we can see we get this TPU address. We can also see the different kind of like workers that we get on the TPU. Again, we're getting eight cores here on the on the TPU when we act like using uh, Google Colab's TPUs because they have like this TPU system as I talk about in the TPU uh, tutorial here uh, on the channel as well. So now we're going to load the pre-trained models. Now we have set up the, 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 we have our image that we want to pass through our model. And then we also have our TPU initialized. So now we have everything. Now we just need to load the pre-trained model and then pass our image through the model. And then we can get the output results after that. So now we're just going to load the pre-trained model here. We're going to load the pre-trained Kogo model that is saved here in the Google, uh, Google GPU checkpoints. So basically here, we just have our directory for our saved model. We just go inside mask rcnn that we just cloned at the start and then we can just call tf.savedmodel.loader.load and then we can basically just have our session which is our tpu session uh, with tensorflow and then we just specify the save model directory so we have our directory model that we need to pass onto our g uh, or onto our tpu so that that's why we need it on on this G -G -G gcs bucket here to be able to run it we can see we have gs cloud TPU checkpoints, and then we have mask RCNN because this is basically just a pre-trained mask RCNN neural network um, with this checkpoint here, uh, or like this checkpoint here. And then we're just going to use this model. So we have our save model directory. We pass it into our loader to get it with our session. Um, over here, we can actually specify another path to our model directory if we have it somewhere else um, in Google. Now we're just going to run this blob code here. We can see that we get some outputs here. This function will only be available through the version one compatibility li library. So again, that's why we're using TensorFlow version one. We can see where we're restoring some parameters from this uh, model directory that we specified. So now we can actually go down, use the model on the TPU. So now we're going to perform instant segmentation and retrieve the different kind of predictions. So we're going to, we're going to get the boundary boxes, the classes, the, the masks inside those boundary boxes as well. So basically here we just have our session dot uh, run here. So when we call this, we will actually like do a forward or like feed forward or like forward pass of our image in our neural network of the architecture that I showed you in the slides. And then the outputs will be the number of detections, the detection boxes, so the bounding boxes. We also have the classes for all the bounding boxes, the scores, so the confidence scores, how confident are our, our neural network in the predictions that it's doing. And we also get out the mask for all the detections. And at the end here, we also get some image information um, or like information about our image. Basically here, we just pass in the number of detections, zero, boundary box is zero. So we're just going to specify all the things that we actually like want to get out when we do our uh, run here on our session. So our forward pass um, of our neural network. Then we go down and use all the different kind of like outputs here. So to get the number of detections, the boundary boxes, scores, classes, and so on, we're basically just going in and using squeeze from NumPy. So we're just going to squeeze all the outputs here that we get from our session. So this is basically just some standards, how to set it up. And then we can just use directly these 
uh, numpy arrays that we get out here at the end and then we can display those with the visualization function that are just imported at the top of this uh, script here in google colab so we have all the numpy number of detections our bounding boxes scores classes mask and so on we also have our x x min and our like a y min and x min and y max and x max for our uh, bounding boxes so we can actually like display uh, those as well and then we can see all the process boxes here we're just going to do a concatenation of all those uh, x x uh, x and y values of our bounding boxes so that will basically be the top left corner and the bottom right corner uh, of our bounding boxes that we have here and then we're just concatenating those to our process boxes because then we can go in here and get our acts like segmentations so we're going inside coco dot underscore metric and then we're going to have this generate segmentation from mask so we basically just have our mask which is the output from our neural networks and then inside the cocoa metrics we're just going to generate our segmentation so we actually like have this instance segmentation we just pass in our instant mask that we got up here after squeezing the detection mask from our neural network then we also need to specify our process boxes here which is the boundary boxes of all the objects that we have and then we also have our height and the width here um, as well of our image so we can actually like scale that to our segmentation so we get the correct segmentations in our images so now we're going to run this block of code here we will then do a forward pass and we'll get out all the predictions and all uh, the process data here of our neural network then the last block of code here is actually like visualizing the detected results so again you can just use your own image take your own url pass it in here and then you can actually like just play around with it and so on so here we're going to visualize the detection results um, we can basically specify here the maximum number of boxes that we want to draw. So let's say that we have an image where we only want to take like 10, 10 people in the, in the image. Then we can just specify the number of 10 here and also the minimum score threshold. So if we want to be really confident that we're detecting like the correct classes in our image, then we can just try to like uh, increase this threshold here as well. Or if we're not detecting any boxes in our image as well uh, at all, we can try to lower this threshold here. But here we're going to get uh, go with a threshold value of 0.1. So all the confidence scores above 0.1 will actually like be a bounding box, but we only want to get 50 results or like 50 bounding boxes in our image. So this is what we set up here. So we just have these different parameters that we set. And then we're just going to create this slider over here to the right as we can do with these uh, with this like type um, like type of line of code here in Google Colab. So here we can get our image with the detections that we can then after that we can create an array and then we can display that as an image with PRL. So here we're going to use our visualization underscore utils and then we just go into visualize boxes and labels on image array and then we just basically just pass in all information that we have our image our outputs from our neural network or like a squeezed outputs from our neural network so we have our image we have our detection or like a bounding boxes we have our classes scores our category category indexes so we need to get all the scores or like our classes we need to map those to our categories that we set up at the top for coco so we actually like get the correct labels for our bounding boxes and segmentations and then our instance mask here will act like be our processed segmentations so we both get the bounding box and the segmentation and then we can set uh, our use normalized coordinates here equal to false Maximum boxes to door, we just set that to the threshold, two threshold values that we set up here at the top or with this slider over here to the right. Then we can basically just have an output image path here. So this is just going to have uh, have the name test underscore results and we're going to store it in a JPEG. And then we can just use pill again here to get an image from an array because this image with the detection here is basically just an array when we convert it to NumPy uh, 8-bit unsigned integer. And then we're just going to call this dot save and then we specify the path where we want to save our image to so basically here we're just creating an image from an array saving it to this uh, output image path and then we can use display again to just display a path uh, with our image function down here at the bottom so we just call display dot image we specify the path of the image that we want to, to to show or display and then we also specify the width of our image so now when we run this blob code we will actually like get the results here that i showed you in the slides uh, before and all like early in this video here as well so now we're processing everything here we're doing the visualization and then we are going to act like displayed here at the bottom so now we can see we get the results here we get all these different kind of bounding boxes as we saw in the slides as well we're detecting the, the person here 52 percent confidence score that this is actually like a person this is actually like a really nice prediction we can see the head 
we can see like the arms and like the hands and so on we can see like his legs and a bit of his like core here so basically this is actually like a really nice model it's really good at doing detections and also image segmentation so here we can see it misses some pixels here in the mask and also in the arm here as well but all the other instances here it, it's just really nice results we can even see the umbrellas here or like here we get some really nice masks around the umbrellas also the cars we can detect cars like even really far away we can see we got some we get some errors here and there but again it's a really nice a neural network and that can be used for a lot of different kind of things we both have detection we have image segmentation of different kind of instances we have all these different kind of classes that we can detect so we have multi-class detection with image segmentation we also get the correct like labels and we also get a confidence score of how confident is it act like that this is a person a handbag uh, umbrella car and so on we can even see that this predicts that it is a handbag i'll just zoom in here a bit more so it thinks that this is here is a handbag and even draws this uh, red mask here it should have been a bit a bit more up here at the top as well but even that it, it you can, you can even like see that this is a handbag here which is just really nice it has a confidence score of 51 um, as i can see here so this is a really nice result it's really accurate it can be used for a lot of different kind of things again you can just take your own image play around with it you can just go into my github and take uh take the code run through all the blocks here of cells and you can even like run it on the cpu if you don't want to set it up on the cpu it will just take a bit longer but again you can perfectly do it like it, you will get the same results like almost the same results and uh, with the cpu it will just take a bit longer to actually like, do the inference on so thank you guys for watching this video here we've been through how we can do image segmentation with mask rcnn we saw the results here we saw how we can set it up here in google colab with the tpu and we also went through the models in the slide early on in the video so remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it just will help me and the youtube channel out in a massive way i'm currently doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operation camera calibration stereo vision how we can get depth information in our image with stereo vision combine that with point clouds and then we can do point cloud processing and a lot of different kind of stuff so if you're interested in that tutorial i'll link to it up here or else i'll see you next week guys Bye for now.